Welcome. Last fall, my wife and I decided to pack up our belongings in Eastern Virginia and move to Northwest Washington on the Olympic Peninsula and set up our home here. Uh, I had been teaching in Port Townsend last summer and we found that the climate suited us very well. So one of the things I really like about living out here is you, you can step out the back door and there's the Olympic Mountains. And then you step out the front and across the road is the uh, Straits of Juan de Fuca. Now we're looking across San Juan Islands, Whidbey Island. In the distance you can see Victoria, British Columbia. When the tide goes out there's a, a mud flat there. The birds like to get on there and do a little hunting. Out there in the distance is a little island that uh, appears and uh, the seals get up there and they pretty much hang out there all day long. Step out into the actual back pasture here and uh, you get a real good look at the mountains. We've, we've moved, we've sold the house, we sold the, the workshop, and now I've got a new workshop that I want to show you. Uh, it's in the background, it's got a nice 1400 square foot uh, footprint, a good size for what I do right now, and uh, let, me, let me give you a look at the shop. This is the new shop. It's a far cry from what I had in Virginia. Uh, it's, not, it's got a lot of room, no problem there. It's just it's not heated and it's not well lit. It's got a few fluorescent lights way up in the ceiling. That ceiling is like 17 feet high. So I've got to get some better lighting in here. First thing is just to get all these machines put in approximately the right place so that I can move around a little bit. So let's go ahead inside the main door. For those of you who are familiar with my video of my Virginia workshop, uh, you'll realize right off the bat that this is a lot different. Um, when I moved in here, the biggest challenge, uh, challenge is, I guess, were to get uh, better lighting. Uh, I used to have lighting that was way up there on that 17 foot tall ceiling and I had to add a, a lot of fixtures and uh, lower them down to you know 10 11 feet to give me better light and also challenge was how to get the tools in here and get them wired up and get the dust collection uh, fixed up so my, my, my philosophy was to make a center island of tools okay just to kind of give you the layout we came in this door my power panel is over there in the corner. It's a 100 amp service coming from the house. And uh, we have a cement floor. All the walls are built already, all insulated. So really putting wiring under the floor or in the walls or in the ceiling was a non-starter. So what I did was I went ahead and made a chase, or not a chase, but a run from a wiring that goes along the wall and then comes across a catwalk. See that catwalk a little better? To the center island, which I built up with two by material. And around the center island, I have the drum sander. I've got the jointer, the eight inch jointer. I've got the 15 inch planer. And over here I've got the bandsaw. And running off of that island is the only on the floor piping and conduit it goes to the saw stop. So I was able to kind of keep the floor pretty much free of conduit and piping except for that little area. Plus inside that island I was able to put my flammable liquids locker and a uh, you know, place to store wood and so forth. A couple of, couple of uh, pegboards, that sort of thing. So that works pretty well. Now, starting from this corner here, I've gone ahead and taken advantage of every bit of, of wall space uh, for racks. I got my clamps here, some of my clamps here. Over in this other corner is my bench area. 
And uh, you see I have a lot of clamps, a lot of tools. I also tried to keep a lot of my hand tools nearby the bench. Along this wall is a lot of storage area and I've opened up one of these storage areas to show you what it's like. Now, the dust collection here, I left my old dust collection system intact back in Virginia and here in Washington I, I bought myself a uh, Clearview Cyclone and I uh, encased it in a, uh, you know, it's not soundproof, but it kind of deadens the sound enclosure up there at the top of the enclosure where the air has to come come out. I put some uh, baffling, foam baffling material and uh, the big filter area, okay, is inside this door. I think you can see that. I've got two filters vertically. The cyclone itself is inside this other little door. Let me undo the latch. Show that to you. Like I say, it's a clear view cyclone. It's uh, made on the principles of uh, Bill Pence design and I find it's uh, pretty darn efficient. Let me go ahead and fire it up for you with all the doors open. With the doors closed, it's a lot quieter. This Clearview's got a big five horsepower motor at the top. I hooked it up to a uh, six inch PVC drain pipe ducting. I looked into using the metal ducting like I had in uh, Virginia, but just the shipping price of that was equal to the price of the material, and uh, using locally obtained six inch PVC. Uh, really made a big difference. I've got a blast gate at every machine, so I come off the dust collector, come into this main trunk here. This goes on over to my edge sander, where I've got a couple of blast gates down there, one for each pipe. The main trunk comes down over here, goes on over to my planer where I've got a blast gate down through this T arrangement or excuse me Y arrangement comes into another blast gate for my saw stop another blast gate for the joiner and by the way I had some extra um, steel material left over from Virginia I brought it with me and used it for these parts Blast gate for the uh, drum sander, and finally a blast gate for the uh, bandsaw. Then we've got a branch that comes over in the overhead that goes to the radial arm saw, and I made a little dust hood there. Same kind of dust hood for the compound miter saw. So I've got a pretty decent dust collection system here. It all feeds into this one plastic barrel, which was left over here at the house as a, a rain barrel, but we only get 10 inches of rain a year, so I don't think it got a whole lot of use. So I went ahead and converted it into the dust barrel, and I can just come in here with a hand truck, pick it up, bring it on out, put the dust, you know, as mulch or into compost as, you know, as needed. Now, let's see, over here, the shop came with a big bunch of benches and cabinets already installed. So I took advantage of all that. There was a, a natural opening here that just seems to be the right size for the edge sander, so that's where that went. Uh, there's a built-in radial arm saw, and I mean it's built-in. So uh, I just decided uh, to not tr take apart all these cabinets, but just to leave it. Maybe someday I'll use it as a, a buffing wheel or something like that. And of course I've got space over here for my uh, assembly bench. And I bought quite a bit of lumber back from Virginia with me. I loaded up a trailer with some of my nicest pieces. I've got a, a lot of cherry and walnut, which 
you know, it's a little harder to come by that out here, plus some holly, and that'll get me going. And a bunch of, uh, of, of uh, blocks, billets uh, made from cherry. The radial arm saw uses the same table setup that I had in Virginia. And uh, I also reused uh, the wood rack idea, but I didn't bring my wood rack. So I've got these vertical wood racks built on the same design that I used in Virginia. And, uh, but just a whole lot less of them that I had th than I had there. And of course, the old 1951 uh, shop, uh, Shopsmith 10ER, uh, the old standby for me really works well. Over here was a natural place for the shop bot. The, the bench just happened to come out, you know, you can see an extra foot or so into the space and I thought, boy, that's ideal and it, it really does, it fits just right. I had to remove a couple of wall cabinets here uh, to fit that in and so I can reuse them somewhere else later. And of course underneath, I've just got a ton of storage space. Now if you remember from my Virginia shop, I had uh, two levels and uh, so I was able to store every, everything, you know, either upstairs or downstairs. Here you only have one level, so this extra storage space comes in really handy. And if you notice from the old uh, Virginia um, video, and on my other videos, which are, you know, up to this point, we're all done in Virginia, uh, I had uh, a big 16-inch planer, well, or joiner. Well, I couldn't bring that joiner with me. It's just too heavy to move cross-country. So I uh, only use an 8-inch joiner, and to make up for that loss, I built one of these sleds that I saw in fine woodworking a couple of months ago, uh, where you take a, uh, this is really a straight edge in the center there. It's one of the straight edge clamps that you use for, um, you know, when, you, when you're going to run a, a uh, circular saw along a piece of plywood. And uh, you can actually set that on into this, I made two layer sled using three quarter inch plywood, actually leftover plywood from the enclosure there. And I was able to set that in there and now I can lift up that sled, I can clamp uh, whatever work I want to uh, flatten in, into there, you know, what, what I want a true one, one face. And using those little uh, wedges you see there on the table, uh, I can wedge the uh, corners of the board to get it so it doesn't rock. And then I can just take that whole sled over and put it into my 15 inch planer and uh, pretty quickly true up one face of the stock. And then of course, you know, you're at the same point you were if you had a big 16 inch joiner. So it works pretty well, especially, you know, if you're not doing a a lot of production. If you just need to occasionally, uh, squ you know, face up something that's that's wider than eight inches. Now, over here in this corner, I've got uh, just a little bench that uh, I used to keep back in my finish room, uh, and here's where I keep all my planes and chisels. That's a little chisel cabinet up there. Same setup. All this stuff is stuff that I had in Virginia, and I just relocated out out to here. And then over here, I've got the sanding station. Okay, I've got the uh, downdraft table. Um, all my sandpaper set up. The Guinevere system over here. So I kind of consolidated all that, and it saves a whole lot of steps. And you know, when you're 65, saving steps makes a difference. And back here behind the uh, enclosure for the dust collector, I'm able to store my saw blades. Now going into this room, this uh, this shop, by the way. Originally was, can you guess, an RV garage. All right, so uh, the fellow who built the house used it as an RV garage and then later on turned it into his workshop. Uh, but while he was building the house himself, he and his wife, they lived out here. And so they needed a bathroom and kitchen. So guess what? My workshop has a bathroom and kind of a kitchen. Come on in here. First thing that meets your eye is the shower, which is now the storage room for all the pictures that I can't fit on the wall in here because I need all my wall space for clamps and tools. So if I ever get to the point where I need a shower, I've got it. I've got a toilet. I've got a sink, which comes in really handy. You can put this little piece of counter material on top of the sink there 
and now you have a pretty decent sharpening station. So I went ahead and put my sharpener or my grinder there and all my sharpening stones. Plus I have a sink, you know, because I use water stones. So it really comes in handy. I didn't used to have a sink back in Virginia, so I'm real happy about that. Got a microwave if I ever can think of a reason to use it. I'm sure there's some reason I'll need in the future, so I kept it. And then over here I make my little office area. And uh, just general storage area. So it comes in kind of handy. Uh, also since I've been here, I went ahead and installed, or had installed, one of these split unit Mitsubishi uh, heat pumps. Uh, it's kind of up out of the way and it'll heat the place. It also it does a pretty good job of uh, dehumidifying, although you don't really need air conditioning out here on the uh, northern Olympic Peninsula. Uh, and on top of these cabinets, I'm able to install, you know, uh, save some of the uh, packing materials that I brought from Virginia. I suspect that's going to last a real long time for me now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little walk through my workshop. Now it's time to get to making some things. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.